This video is brought to you by Clean My Mac X. So as many of you may know, I'm a huge proponent for of the MacBook Air M1. I think it's one of the best value laptops right now for any kind of general user. But one flaw or at least downside to my coverage is that I am purely a Mac user. I've only used Mac OS pretty much exclusively since I've been like six from school to now. And I lack that sort of Windows user perspective, which is why today I've brought on my friend Trey who has always been a Windows user, sort of in the way that I've always been a Mac user, and he recently caved and bought a MacBook. Like, who would have thought? You know, there's a stereotype that like Windows users are like, oh, imagine buying a Mac and spending all that money. But recently, with the launch of the M1 Macs, opinions have changed and the public's perception of like what value you get out of Apple laptops has changed because of the hardware. So without getting too much into this here, ladies and gentlemen, once again, welcome Trey. He's a classmate and a friend of mine. Yeah, he bought a MacBook Air M1. It was the last thing I thought was gonna happen. I just had to have him on the channel here. So I have a couple questions to ask him here that I've written. Um, give, me, give me a sec. <clears throat> All right, so yeah. We're gonna ask him some questions as to why he bought the laptop and as to what his experience has been like in the, how, how long have you had this? Week and a half now. Okay, so like he's had it for long enough to where he is comfortable probably to, I mean, that's why he's here, right? Yep. So anyway, um, Trey, how long have you been a Windows user? Um, at least 15 years, since I was six or seven or so. Uh, I started on a Windows XP, uh, I had a Windows 98, so I'm familiar with all the old to the brand new OSs. Okay. So like, how would you characterize like your your usage like percentage wise like of Windows in your entire life? Like, I mean, I've always used Windows, um, ninety nine plus percent. Okay, yeah. so that's like okay. So he's a Windows user, you guys. When he's not a poser, you know, this is like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that's why I'm having on having him on here because it's he's completely different from me. I've always used a Mac since I was like six. Um, we we were talking about how like some schools had Macs. That's kind of how I was introduced because my family had like an XP system, which I did use, but honestly I don't count that because I only used it for like a year before I went to school and started using like Mac OS like Panther or Mac OS 10.2 10, 10 or whatever. But so yeah, that's um, interesting. Uh, so you had dabbled with Macs a tiny bit, but just negligible. Yeah, much. just in class for 30 minutes at a time or so okay. on Mac. So pretty much the same or parallel in terms of my Windows usage. We just have sort of stuck to our own sides for the entirety of our lives here. But uh, the next question is more about your usage case. What do you use a laptop for? Like, what do you do with it just in, in general in life? Yeah, like, yeah. yeah just. So I use a laptop just for basic productivity stuff. Um, just watching videos, uh, classwork, emails, basic social media. Um, nothing too intense, but I want it to be I want to be able to use it long term, so I, I need a good battery for it. Right, and I guess it's fair to say that, you know, depending on your usage, whether you like video editing or doing AutoCAD or whatever, that might dictate whether you go with the Windows laptop or an Apple laptop for hardware or software reasons. But I think it's fair to say also that if you're just doing general usage, you can be more ambiguous with your choice, you know, which is probably part of the reason why you went with a, a Mac, because you didn't necessarily need Windows for anything that you're doing, right? Yeah, absolutely. My next question is what Windows laptops did you consider? Because there's a lot of compelling choices. There's the Acer Swift X, there's a Surface Laptop 4, which is powerful with AMD processors. Um, there's a Surface Pro devices. So like, yeah, like what were your, what were the competitors here? Yeah, so I, I was considering Almost all of the service devices, uh, from from the Pro Seven Very to nice. the uh, the one that you mentioned, I also considered Acer. Um, I was looking into like Razer and Alienware, but they're still Intel based. And on my yeah. last one, uh, the battery blew up because of the <sighs> CPU got so hot. So. I needed something that I could trust the thermals a little bit more on. Yeah, funny you mentioned Intel. I mean, not really, because we all know that they've sort of stagnated. And uh, and it, I think we both have, have experienced that because I mean, Intel processors have sort of always been in like gaming PCs, Windows laptops, uh, more so than AMD. AMD just recently sort of took the lead um, in terms of their Ryzen, you know, stuff, which is fantastic. And also too in Macs. I mean, like for years I used, you know, underpowered, thermally stupid, like iMacs and MacBooks. So we both had our issues with Intel. So funny you mentioned that once again, rightfully so. Um, so was there any, this is my next question, was there any video or any creator, or anything that just sort of made the MacBook Air pop into your head? Like what introduced you to it? 
I wish I had a better answer for that, but honestly, I think it was just word of mouth. And you know, Apple's very clever with their advertising. I've always given them that credit. So I think I've seen some ads somewhere and maybe on YouTube or whatever, but uh, I think it was just kind of the mix of everything of just hearing really good reviews and occasionally seeing Apple produce content. So like YouTube, you would say like Yeah, YouTube, YouTube and TV. Yeah, I mean, right now, I mean like a couple years ago or like last year, iPad Pro was huge. You know, simply because Apple Silicon was on the inside, it was a compelling product compared to the slower Intel machines that cost even more. But yeah, now that we have that same tech in like these laptops, that's been the new like hot topic, you know? And I, I that's why I'm making this video. The M1 MacBook Air is a very popular device and something I can stand behind. So it's of no surprise that you kind of heard about that. And also Apple's marketing. We're, we're both business students. You know, we, we know a thing or two about whatever marketing is. But um, yeah, their marketing is, is bar none. Like they're so great at it. They really emphasize the supercharged nature of the M1. And yeah, and the videos, you know, prove that. You know, I, I, I like remember when the M1 chip came out and Apple was like throwing all these numbers at us. A lot of people were like, oh, it's just marketing. Like, oh, it's like, it's just BS. But when people actually used it, I mean, while these computers are not perfect, they are really, really impressive. And I think you've sort of probably realized that that might even mm -hmm. lead into my next question. Um, what MacBook Air M1 feature played a role in your purchase? Um, I, I think three big things that are probably the big things that most people think about um, is thermals, battery life, and um, no fan. So it's not getting hot. I don't have to hear a loud annoying fan and it has a long battery life. And for me, those are that's huge for a laptop. And you see all those TikToks with like students who often default to like MacBook Airs and Pros. They're like, oh, when I get on Zoom or when I open up like Google Docs, like it's like literally like, <laughs> like taking off, right? <laughs> so like, yeah, I noticed that too. Like this is why this is my preferred student laptop of choice. Not that the fan in the MacBook Pro is gonna kick off, but like this thing is completely silent all the time. It never gets like more warm than like, I don't even like, like with the Intel MacBooks, it would literally burn you. This, it can get warm if you're doing something like intensive, but not beyond that. I don't think, I don't think you, have you I haven't gotten that? it hot on right. the yet. And it's mostly just ice cold and silent, which is so, so nice. But uh, yeah, let's uh, move on to the next question here. Oh, actually, before we do, I have a quick message from our sponsor. Once again, this video is brought to you by Clean My Mac X. And for those of you potentially switching over to an M1 MacBook Air or Mac users in general, if you're looking to speed up, optimize, and protect your Apple computer, this program might be for you. Over time, any new Mac gets clogged up with redundant files and background data buildup. With the smart scan feature, in a matter of seconds, Clean My Mac X can examine your volume to rid of any file clutter and unneeded cache files, as well as run optimization tasks and quickly check for malware. Space Lens is another great feature which allows you to identify which files are taking up the most space on your computer so you can more easily free up disk space for your creative projects or work in general. Clean My Mac X also has an optimization feature which allows you to manage power hungry tasks with ease, opposed to using the very technical system activity monitor. And finally, with the malware removal feature, Clean My Mac X can scan your Mac for and instantly annihilate cryptocurrency miners, viruses, and adware. Click my link in the video description to download a free trial today. And welcome back. Uh, my next question for Trey is, uh, what are your thoughts on Apple Silicon beyond what I've already said? Um. I mean, I've been pretty impressed so far. Uh, I'm, su I'm super into like Windows tech typically. So seeing an Apple laptop that came out and impressed me, made me happy. Um, it's file management is noticeably impressive uh, as well as like it's task management. It does really well with memory. Um, it feels like a lot of devices, especially Windows tend to be poorly optimized as far as memory or how browsers work. So, um, being able to have multiple things open and not have to worry about closing a bunch of tabs is what's immediately noticeable with the new um, Even silicon. with like the eight gig model, which you have, where mm -hmm. you didn't buy like the 16 gig model. I mean, it's good to have more RAM, but yeah, that's, some, that's something I noticed too. Obviously I may be a little bit biased because I'm sort of rooting for Apple, um, especially since their laptops were underpowered for so many years. Um, but yeah, like the unified memory seems to be worth more than like regular DDR4 or whatever is in, you know, like typical Windows laptops or PCs or whatever. And yeah, too, of course, the optimization is there. That's Apple's biggest strong suit. Um, Cause I mean, like, honestly, I don't, I mean, I think this, I think the tech is superior in terms of like, he's like, you know, like nanometer stuff, like, like the processor architecture, like, you mm -hmm. know, like, so like, 
I know that Apple's ahead there and they have an advantage working with like TSMC and Foxconn if you can get my drift. But like, even if like, for example, the Snapdragon 888 or like a Intel chip is like similar in terms of its like raw capability without an operating system, the fact that they control the hardware and the software and everything, even though you're sort of at their mercy, everything works so well together. And that's been the case with the iPhone, that's been the case with the iPad, and now with the Mac. And since the Mac is such a powerful tool that so many people can use for work, and you know, even if it's like more average mm -hmm. stuff, yeah, it's it's really great that, it's, it's great to hear that. And I hope that, you know, other competitors from Microsoft, like I, I hope that people start making their own chips. I mean, that's not necessarily sustainable because not every company can make their own chip. But I mean, I see Microsoft doing that with their Surface devices with like the Pro X, even though their first iteration was sort of a failure, not gonna lie, the optimization, just the overall performance was just horrible. But um, yeah, it's it's nice to see that other companies are being sort of pushed to do better, especially AMD. Do you, yeah, do you have any it, thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I personally have a Ryzen 5 uh, in a computer that I also have a 3060 Ti in, yeah. and the Ryzen 5 keeps up, so I'm not complaining about it. Um, I've also noticed NVIDIA is working on their own CPU uh, yeah. through ARM, so I, I'm excited to see better CPUs being pushed. Is that like called something. Tegra or something? I have no idea. Well, whatever, honestly, I, I haven't keep, kept up with that. But yeah, like CPUs are getting better. Like Intel sort of led the industry and they just sort of were selling very smallly changed, that's not how you say that, like poorly iterated new processors, right? Yeah, just very uh, minuscule upgrades every every season. Just, they just added a number, yeah. you know? Like that's what it felt like. But yeah, but AMD, I mean like, I'm not gonna lie, I do own a gaming laptop, which has an Intel chip, but I used to have a gaming PC before I parted it out and I did buy like, I think it was like a Ryzen 9 or Ryzen 7. It was a 30, I think it was a 3900X or something like that, it was a, it was a 12 core. Mm -hmm. But yeah, super impressed by that. I was very, very happy with that. And you know, had I kept it, I would have used it for like, you know, who even knows, like After Effects, stuff like that. But yeah, um, great to hear your thoughts on Apple Silicon. The next question I have is uh, what's your personal experience with Mac OS Big Sur, just, just Mac OS in general? <sighs> I'm not a huge fan of Mac OS, honestly. Um, I feel like it's probably more of a comfort issue than an actual issue with the OS. I'm just, I'm so used to Windows that the transition has been kind of hard. But Mac, they've designed the OS in such a way that even somebody who knows nothing and doesn't like it that much can immediately open it and use it. Like, I was on the laptop within, you know, 30 minutes of having it open, where with Windows, you're fighting the, you're Demons. fighting an ins installation <laughs> process for at least four hours. So it's, in some ways, I'm not a huge fan of the layout necessarily, but I think it's really efficient and I think it's very fast. Um, and with a laptop, I, I can't complain about those things. How's the, the overall aesthetic? Like, do you mind it or do uh, you I like, like it? how it looks. I, I do okay. like, I, I like the aesthetic of it. Um, I just, I, I think the layout and the desktop just doesn't fit with my personality, but. Right, I, plenty of people do like it, so right. it's just preference. That's that's very fair. I mean, not everybody has to like Mac OS. There are some things Windows does better, and vice versa. I wouldn't know because I've only been a Mac user. Uh, but yeah, yeah, it's fair to say that if you pretty much stick with an operating system your whole life, you sort of have built muscle memory in terms of just to, how to get stuff done. Like same thing, I could I could make the uh, I could draw a parallel to like video editing software. I wouldn't switch to Premiere or to Zony Vegas or whatever else because when I sit down, I know exactly what to do. I know the keyboard shortcuts. I know all the ins and outs and all that. So even if maybe the other program does something more efficient or better, I can still get my work done faster and find some other workaround. So. Yeah, definitely fair there. Um, do you have any any major gripes with macOS or any major you know positive qualities that you can think of? Not not immediately. I think I wish it were a little easier to close tests. I don't like having to force close things. Um, yeah. But other than that, nothing really stands out as particularly amazing. But nothing's particularly terrible either. That's good. Yeah, because some people are like macOS is the worst or macOS is the best. I don't think either of those you know ideologies are true. I think that you know every operating system has its sort of you know pros and cons. But you know again, since we get used to them, we sort of pretend that the cons don't exist, even though they do. But yeah, I'm glad to see that you've been able to hop on to Windows, or excuse me, hop on to Windows, hop on to Mac OS, because if you are a Windows user and this hardware is super tempting, um, I guess you could say it's not as daunting as some may think. Yeah, I, I was wor pretty worried about that at first, but the productivity 
like the workflow between the two, it really isn't that difficult. And to like the hardcore Windows users in the audience, like would you say like Mac OS is dumbed down in any way or is it a pretty full fledged like operating system? In your opinion, I guess, as a Windows For user. For how I use Windows, um, and I, I, I'm very picky. I like having a lot of control over my stuff. Uh, it feels a little bit dumbed down. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, I mean, it feels closer to Linux. I've worked with Linux. Yeah. It feels similar to Linux, if you're familiar with that at all. Um, but it's it's not a terrible change going over. Yeah, it, it just feels like a less customizable it's experience. It's probably similar like iOS in terms of it just being locked down. You can't, I, you, I mean, I know there's ways to customize Windows. It's probably more difficult than customizing Android, but obviously, yeah, Mac OS is sort of what they make it. That's it. Like you can only do so much to customize it to your liking. All right, well, great to hear about your experience or your limited experience with Mac OS. My next question for you is, what do you think about the overall build quality of your new laptop, the MacBook? The build quality is honestly great. Um, yeah, the, there's nothing I can really complain about Apple build quality on really any of their products. Um, as much as I want to sometimes, <laughs> I, I just can't because they're they're solid, they look great. The uh, Is it aluminum or steel? I think it's aluminum. Aluminum. Yeah, it's I, aluminum. I, yeah. It's the uh, space gray aluminum. I I love the look. It's very it's very modern. It's clean. It's and light. they kept it since. I mean, like it, it's very similar to like the original design. If you really think about it, like Apple doesn't really change their design language for years. Even though they did redesign the MacBook Air in 2018, but yeah, I mean, it's it's like almost four years later now. And I, I would agree too. Even though we're gonna see some more radical shifts in Mac design, just like we saw with the iMac. It, it does look modern, I think. And again, that's coming from a Mac user, an Apple creator, you know, that's why I have him here because the fact that he's saying it definitely has a little more value, I think, because, you know, usually, like you said, you, you would like to dog on Apple, especially like when, I think it was easier to do it when you were just paying for the Apple premium look and feel, which was obviously nice with the exception of the butterfly keyboard, which I'm glad you yeah. missed because that's just horrible. But um, yeah, I, I happen to love it too. Uh, what are your thoughts on the trackpad and the keyboard specifically? Because those are features that I've like really been like, this, this, this is the greatest thing ever, you know? Like, <laughs> Honestly, they're, they're pretty good, uh, especially compared to most laptops. Uh, the Surface has a decent trackpad, but Absolutely, yeah. for a laptop, the, the keyboard feels great, the trackpad feels great. Uh, the response on the trackpad is particularly good, especially if it's cold or if you're a little sweatier, like that tends to impact yeah, other devices it's true. where you, it just won't work. And how about Touch ID, the speakers, any thoughts on the those? The Touch ID is great. Speakers I haven't had much experience with yet. Um, I still do most of my like video watching and you know gaming or whatever on my, my primary computer, but the, the Touch ID is incredibly convenient, especially with uh, Apple storing passwords. Yeah, well integrated, I would say. I mean, and, and there are other Windows laptops with biometric face unlock and fingerprint, but yeah, Apple of course has implemented this. They got it down pat because they have been doing it since the iPhone 5S. Um, but with the build in mind, what's your thoughts on the port situation to USB-C? Is that limiting? Like, I, I guess it could be limiting, but uh, I, I have a USB-C multi-port dongle thing <laughs> that I used for my computer anyways. So it it's really not an issue for me, especially with everything being digital these days. I think a lot of the arguments about ports is almost out of time. Like you really don't use USB ports for too much these days. Yeah. Unless you're doing like editing or right. like camera right. integration. And that's why I think, I mean, you've probably, made, I don't know if you keep up with Apple rumors, but apparently Apple's gonna bring back ports to the higher end MacBook Pros. So that I guess makes sense because the demographic of people buying those laptops need an SD card, maybe might need a USB-A if there's even gonna be one on there, HDMI as well. But yeah, I mean, even though sometimes it does suck to have two ports on here, yeah, you're right. It's like most stuff is wireless. Most stuff you can print wirelessly now. You can do AirDrop, which is a great feature. Any thoughts yeah, on that? Yeah, AirDrop's great. It's like, AirDrop is like <laughs> half the reason why I can't like leave the Apple ecosystem, I swear to God. iMessage is like another 45%. But in all seriousness, yeah, like most things are wireless. So other than charging, I mean, I don't find myself needing to attach a mouse or anything because this really is a portable device. I mean, Albeit some people do connect to like a monitor. I have done that before. I have my MacBook Pro hooked up to a monitor and using a dongle is kind of like, eh. Like I am looking forward to the ports, but yeah, for like something like this, this device is meant for being on the go um, and just, you know, like you're not necessarily gonna be plugging into anything. Now I can't speak for you, but you know, at least a Windows user can agree, you know, it's not the end of the world for sure. And of course USB-C is like 
on it has like unlimited capability not really but like in terms of just becoming other ports that you might need and outputting you know what you need as well so with the port question out of the way the next one i want to ask which is really important is what's your experience with battery life because this is a huge like marketing point or feature of this laptop yeah that's a major part of what got me interested in the laptop um it's been great so far uh, i think i've charged it you know two or three times since i bought it over uh, a week yeah, exactly. <laughs> Just um, crazy. And I coming from the Razer family of laptops, I got under watching videos under load maybe 45 minutes on yeah. it. So being able to go like a full day without even thinking about charging is fantastic. I mean, it's sort of like, I wouldn't say intuitive, but like common sense, like, oh, if you have like this powerful gaming laptop, obviously it's meant to be plugged in. So like, that's an extreme case of like, mm battery difference but yeah i mean even with like an intel macbook pro like i said this in previous reviews many times i remember being in class and being worried about like dropping 25 35 percent you know or just like running out of battery in class but with this though i mean it just power slips i've been in places where it's gone down like 10 15 percent over the course of like hours where i've been away from home and it's just crazy to be able to just do those basic things so like if you're gonna be like video editing and playing minecraft or whatever obviously you know, your mileage is going to vary. Like the the advertised, you know, web surfing battery life does not apply if you're doing really mm -hmm. hardcore stuff. But for like us, we're business students. We do, sometimes we do Zoom, we do Google Docs, slides, maybe Sheets or Excel. You know, it's gonna drain pretty uniformly. And the fact that you only charged it two or three times is, is amazing. It might not be Apple's 15 hour mark, but it's definitely within the ballpark, I think. It, it definitely seems like it'll get there. Um... You know, and they've gotten the batteries a lot better, so they last longer too. So, right. Which is which is welcome because there's not as much heat. Right. Yeah. That's what killed my other one was it was heat plus battery life. You got the Intel chip with the the whole fan array to keep it from yeah burning right your next house to the down. giant lithium pack. Yeah, and they can only make the batteries so big, but with this you get the Apple Silicon happening. It already power sips like your iPhone and your iPad, and you got a huge battery in here, so it's like a phone chip basically or a mobile chip that's power more powerful than some desktop chips, paired with a laptop sized battery, which is why they've been able to really, you know, hit home that these are great, you know, battery life oriented or long lasting devices. All right, my second to last question is, did you buy any accessories for your laptop? Um, I just bought some dongles and then I bought the leather fanboy cover. This thing is not cheap, guys. I saw this, I was like, you of all people <laughs> bought this. Like you would expect like iJustine, like, love her but like you know that's like a typical like apple fanboy girl purchase but you what what made you buy this i'm so paranoid about scratching the outside of it it's, yeah it's that did. metal it just i don't want to mess with it so I i'd rather pay to do you see it. how the apple logo here is scratched right mm -hmm. there so i already i already scratched mine so i don't Wouldn't blame it if you, you bought the case right for 179 million dollars it's on the apple card <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't look at the price three percent cash back um, so there you go. That, that's the incentive to buy some expensive accessories, but yeah, but it's a nice cover though. I mean, I like Apple's leather stuff. It's high quality for sure. My final question though, is any final thoughts on the laptop? Any takeaways? This, this feels like a class. I swear. I feel like a professor. <laughs> like, any, any final takeaways here? Ugh. Yeah. Um, I, I guess if you need like a basic laptop for productivity use, I, as somebody who exclusively uses Windows, I would heavily recommend this, and I have recommended it to my dad actually, who was in the market for one. So, I think it's a it's a it's a great laptop for what it is. Um, if you don't expect more than what's promised out of it, I think you'll be completely happy. You have to have the right expectations. It's not the end all be all like replace your gaming PC laptop or anything, but yeah. I would say the same, it's not perfect. The MacBook Pro is better suited for my own personal work, but for schoolwork and everything else, yeah, same for me, even though I am, I mean, I think it's fair to say both of us are more like prosumers at the very least. I obviously use tech in ways normal people don't, but we both love this laptop. And I, I guess also I'll say, if there's a Windows alternative that lines up with this, would you flock to that? Would you like sell this and immediately just like jump ship? I don't think I would. I think I mess. I honestly, I message is such a. I message and airdrop is such a benefit. <laughs> like being in. They school, captured you, yeah, didn't they? Yeah. The the wall just went up, and he's like, you, you can't get out of the Garden yeah, of Eden. It's, it's it's scary. Um. So 
I, I will say this not hopefully I'm not interrupting you, you correct me if I'm wrong. But once you're kind of in the in the Apple ecosystem, whether it's iOS or Mac OS, less so iPad OS because an iPad can be more of a standalone like device. But if you get a Mac or you get an iPhone or you have both, which is your That's what's situation, dangerous. Is once you get it, both, it's it it's all comes together. Well and you're like, <laughs> man, you know, maybe I should get the AirPods, maybe I should get the watch. And that's where they get you. But it's it's like a nice prison, you know? It's like a prison with like really nice walls and a nice bed. And But in all seriousness, Apple products work really well. The ecosystem, I think the Apple ecosystem is the most successful in the entire industry. Samsung and Microsoft are coming, I wouldn't say coming close, but definitely, you know, working towards that as well. But yeah, um, that's about it, guys. I hope that this was valuable to anybody in the audience who is more of a Windows user. Again, it's great to have an alternative perspective here. I hope I can probably have him on the channel for another reason as well, especially when we start to see more powerful M series Max, because these are only the beginning. The M1 chip is the base processor. You know, we're gonna see the M1X or whatever the leakers have been talking about. I don't know, M M16 at this point, M6000, whatever, whatever the next chip is, it's gonna be very interesting to see how that stacks up to, you know, AMD chips and whatever, but yeah. Trey, it was great having you on here. I'm glad you're enjoying the MacBook Air. This is not propaganda to make people <laughs> buy MacBooks. He's a very real Windows user. I'm probably going to include or have included a clip of his whole setup. Like this this guy clearly- I actually use Windows. He, he does, he, he does. I promise you that. That's what we're here for. We're here to give you honest perspective. Now I'm really starting to sound like a college <laughs> professor. So I'll wrap things up here. I hope this video was helpful. I'd appreciate it if you leave a like on this video, comment if you have any questions, suggestions, or opinions. And of course, subscribe for more content like this. I can't wait for the Apple event as well. Hopefully I've posted this video before then. Uh, and yeah, check out my link to Clean My Mac X in the video description once again. And as always, I'm Noah and- I'm Trey. You're Trey and I will catch you in the next one.